let's talk about multimeters. Two months ago, Tesman sent me three of their multimeters, and I've actually been giving them a lot of use. It's funny, two months ago when I first opened up the big one, I turned it on and I was completely surprised. I did not expect it to have a big bright LCD screen or LED screen or EL screen or whatever it is. So that was a little bit of a shock. I I had kind of been going on the same information for multimeters for a long time. And when I moved here, I wanted to buy one, but none of them looked like something I could really enjoy. So I ended up buying on eBay the one that I used to buy because they were cheap, the little iNova 3320. It's an automotive multimeter. Honestly, though, it's reliable, but not very good. I've blown those things up a whole bunch and now I don't know if they're even in production anymore. I think I paid 20 bucks, 25 bucks for it. So it's more costly than they were. There's no reason to get those anymore because they're outdated. The um, connectors oxidize like crazy. And I think they get kind of like a moisture issue too. So you gotta like clean them off, like a corrosion issue. And then in 2016, I got this Fluke 101, which I remember my supervisor at Apple, he was like, that's got to be fake. Only $50. I was like, no, I think it's actually real. This is nice, but it's very limited in its features. So I can use it whenever I'm testing batteries, but it's nice to be able to have current sensing. And it's also a bit of a pain to show this on my videos because there's always that fight. Well, this one doesn't even have a way to prop it up. This is why you haven't seen this in my videos that much. There's always that fight on these reflective screens to get it to even display. And I've spent enough time fapping about with those that just the pleasure of this is so nice. You can see that from there. I'm not even holding it up really close. But the other ones I have to be like, like that. But with this, I can just have it anywhere on screen and, and I can see it. And one thing that I like about these is, I know this is probably a common thing in multimeters, but whenever you measure something, it doesn't immediately go away once you disconnect it. Because with the other ones, the older style ones, when you measure something and then go away, it's back to zero. So if you're in an air conditioner measuring something and you come out, you got to hold it like with your toes or something to be able to see this. But with this one, they actually hold the voltage reading for like two, three seconds, something like that, whenever, they, whenever you let off. Now, if the voltage goes down, it keeps sampling it, but that's really cool. And you know what? I do like that it doesn't have the big the big turn knob. Most of the multimeters I've used, I also used a Radio Shack one, my very first one. That's actually a bit of a story because whenever I was a little kid, my uh, my great grandfather on my, my dad's side, you know, I was like seven or eight and to somebody in their 80s, kids just grow up rapidly. And he had bought toys for like a two-year-old and he didn't even think about it. He brought them to the Christmas party. And then when I was un unwrapping it, apparently my, my, my mom and dad told me that and he just had dread on his face when he realized, oh no, they're eight, they're not two. And so the next year, I only realized this the next year whenever he got me a really nice $200, $150, something like that, Radio Shack multimeter. And that thing was what I learned Ohm's Law with plus with my favorite battery, a little car battery that I use for all sorts of experiments, until it died. And then I had to go back to the lower quality ones. But with this, you know, I'm fine with not having the big mega dial or whatever you're gonna call it, because it does open up more real estate. The only issue with these multimeters just happens to do with the structuralness of the meter because I don't know what technology they use for this for the screens and it's not so much an issue with this one 
But with this one, I'm testing things, I'm moving things around, and whenever I, I ha have, I'm holding the camera maybe, I've done this several times in Solar Sunday even, when I go to pull out a cable, I push my finger right in the center of the display and the whole thing goes black and it starts crunching the LCD panels together because I'll be like, like that. Cause I don't think to just be like, I instead put my finger in the middle to push it off and I press right in the middle of the screen. I, well, otherwise I hit the buttons. Mm. Of course, you're supposed to just hold it with two hands and pull it out. But I think since these are flat, honestly, I recommend getting these. And if you find any plexiglass in the trash or if you have any plexiglass you don't need, just cut a little square and glue it onto the front just to help protect it. Now these actually do come out of these little green cases. And they are actually a little little gray case. And there's a light. I totally forgot until just now. I do feel a little bit like technology kind of snuck up on me with this. Because when I opened this, I realized, oh, kind of like my great-grandfather. Um, it, uh, you know, technology has progressed. And when I went to buy a multimeter about four years ago, two years ago, whatever it was, I just got what I thought was available. And I didn't want to deal with any of this new stuff, but honestly, this new stuff is a lot better. They come with a little case and there's three variants, which we actually, Tesman gave me a 10% discount code on. We have the biggest one that comes in the big case and it comes with a thermocouple. So this one actually has temperature sensing options. Oh, that's so cool. I forgot there's a back button. So the, um, the Tesman TSM522S, it just has a function button that goes one direction and loops around. But this one, actually the function goes back. That is so nice. Well, I've used this one already in a video. I think it's probably the previous video that I heated up the water. And I like that it shows the Fahrenheit and the Celsius because why not? I like both measurements for things. I like Fahrenheit because zero is too cold, better stay inside. And 100 is too hot, better stay inside. It seems to work out pretty well for that. And then Celsius is good for glue temperatures and melting metal and more scientific temperatures that are not something the human body should endure, but I do really like that. Now they sent me a third one, the TSM-192, which I haven't even played with yet because, well, I started messing with these ones and I realized I might kill these ones on accident. But the LCD screen seemed to have healed a little bit from my misuse. So it seems like they can take the damage, but it's probably best to put some thicker plastic on there. So then we have this, the Smart Multimeter TSM-192. So we have a flashlight on the top. Comes, comes apart with a screw. It's so funny how to see companies that have an actual Duracell battery it's not like a oomph set cell or something like some random gibberish. It's actually Duracell. I mean, it makes sense because the batteries are all probably made over there. Another thing too, we've had, we've had dry weather and wet weather here. Like we had a few weeks there where it was really wet and then we had a few weeks there where it was really dry. And I haven't had any issues of corrosion with the Tesman probes. So I think that the Tesman probes are of more than good enough quality. Probably, I think they're probably on par with the $50 Fluke from 2016. That one is starting to get a little bit corroded these days, but they had to withstand Illinois humidity, which is just unnatural. 
Okay, so this one's back to, see, this is what I thought these were going to be, and I thought, well, I'll just do the review, and then I'll just, they'll be serviceable. I wasn't expecting these to be this amazing, colorful display, which I am actually pretty, pretty pleased by. I wish I would have gotten these a little bit earlier. I'm not saying I'm ungrateful or anything, because Tesman's given me a few different things. I kind of wish I would have had these a little bit earlier when I was troubleshooting those air conditioners at the uh, the eye doctor building that I help because they had an air conditioner that I believe some gunk from one of the compressors clogged up the um, the valve where it goes from the high pressure side to the low pressure side because it was no it wasn't letting any any refrigerant through a little flashlight this is the kind of thing that I would leave on Oh. Phase? Oh, wow. You can do like volts, ohms. So, okay, so there's a little bit of smarts with this. NCV, live, and phase. There's a few little smart functions with this then. I like that. So this, of course, is not current sensing, and these ones are current sensing. I haven't blown up a multimeter in a long time. Oh, this one's just voltage as well. Okay, so this one is the only current sensing one. Of course, I would recommend this one, the um, TSM-599. It's funny. So I had figured I wouldn't use this one very much, and I would give this to a friend who is even poorer than I am and doesn't have a YouTube channel. And because uh, he just had some multimeter that he brought over from Russia when his family fled. And it was like some really cheap little one from the 90s. And uh, like a, one, the, the kind of ones that you get for $1.99 in 2002. And I was like, well, you know, once I'm done with this video, this would be a good way. I could give this away. And I might even give this one away. But I'm going to keep this one. But I did, you know, it's, maybe I did a stupid thing. But I was like, oh, which one do you want? And he asked ChatGPT instead of looking at the box. And he was like, oh, well, ChatGPT says the uh, TSM-599 is less good. And so I go to the TSM-522S and I'm like, this is why you don't trust ChatGPT because you failed. You could have had this one. You could have had the better one. I w and I would have told you, no, you don't get that one because it's the better one. But instead, you wanted that one. And he was like, <laughs> I guess that's uh, the hallucination at work. It's like, yeah, don't trust ChatGPT. Oh my gosh. It's simple. Just look it up online, you know? I'm quite pleased with these. And I'm going to continue using them. My other ones, I'll probably give them away, honestly. But we can keep this in the car and we can. I'll probably give this to my friend who has all the fluke stuff. He can put that in his fluke bag. I kind of don't care about these ones. This will be a gift for somebody because I'm hoping to open up or start like a electronics get together and. People that want to get into electronics, they can. I can help them get a few things. So I'll set that aside. And I won't mess that one up. I'll keep that one for somebody else. But then these ones, because they're so easy to to read and they're so good for the YouTube channel, these might these will probably become my. Well, they've already become my my average multimeters, but I will be conti continuing to use these. I haven't dropped them yet, which is kind of amazing. I recommend the TSM-599 for doing everything. I especially love the temperature sensor on it. It makes me miss my HP temperature sensor. I don't imagine this can go to the same temperatures as that. But then I recommend the, T uh, the, the TSM-522S if you're doing uh, HVAC work or anything where you're having this far away and having to have your head stuck halfway in a machine or a closet and then you want to look out and and see it. But this one, this one probably also has the, uh, actually I could just do it with that one. The Tesman TSM-192. Let's see, does it have the delay as well? It does. Look at that. It holds it. 
So like that is a life-saving tool. It holds a 2.45 volts for a good little while. A, a lot of people might not realize how big of a difference that is, but it's just a good quality of life thing. That The other ones, they don't hold it for any time. So you have one Mississippi, two Mississippi. So we hold it for two, two seconds, which is pretty good. I seem to recall these ones don't do it nearly as much. Let's see. Yeah, it instantly goes away. And that's led to a few th a few times where I wasted time doing multiple readings because, or then I had to do a thing where I wouldn't be able to actually read it. Instant. That one's even quicker. Clearly, I'm sticking with these ones. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you need a multimeter, I do recommend these. Looks like they're only about 40 bucks, 40, 50 bucks, something like that. I think, I think a little bit cheaper. I can't recall though, but I paid $50 for this one. And I feel like this one is, is on par. And after two months, the batteries are still doing fine. I'm gonna take them out because I don't like using alkaline batteries. I'm gonna put rechargeable batteries in them. A lot of the alkaline batteries, I keep finding they keep blowing up. So even the name brand ones. So I don't trust them. I don't wanna destroy this like I destroyed my Geiger counter. And that was years ago, it recovered. And then this one, the TSM-599. This is my favorite one by far. I do really enjoy that one. Now, of course, you can get way, way fancier ones. You can get the fluke ones that have the LCDs that come off, or you can get the ones that have the wireless link that you can place them around a building. But this is within my price range, and I'm glad that I'm glad they didn't send me one that's a thousand dollars or four hundred dollars or whatever. Because I mean, that would be more of a um speculative review then because I wouldn't actually be buying that kind of thing but $40 I do feel a bit dumb I do feel a bit dumb that I didn't know that these existed these little like I guess they might even be OLED or something I don't know some like electroluminescent display well I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching that's my two-month review See ya.